Okay, so I feel like I see a lot of people on the Reddit asking about uh, tips for spray painting Nerf blasters pretty frequently. So I'm hoping this video will serve as a, a general basics to spray painting Nerf blasters or pretty much anything plastic. Um, so I don't want to talk about a couple of things before I get started. Uh, the first thing is uh, take your time. Like you don't, this isn't a race. You don't have to paint this in an hour. You should be giving yourself plenty of time for the paint to dry between coats before applying tape, just to make sure that you don't accidentally leave fingerprints or rip paint off with the tape. Uh, it sucks to spend hours painting something and then to accidentally ruin it because you were too impatient. Um, another thing is, uh, try to plan out your paint job, like find references on the internet of what you want to do. Maybe use Photoshop to mock something up. Uh, try to think about the steps that your paint job will take. Like if you want to paint this a solid color and then put a stripe, then think about like, well, first I want to paint the entire thing that color and then apply tape and then paint the stripe. Like that kind of idea, like break down your paint job into steps. Uh, I would also suggest that just taking some scrap pieces of plastic and testing out your paints before you spray them onto your blaster. So this is to both see if you can achieve the, the look that you want before you just try it on the blaster, and also to see if, if you're using multiple different types of paints, you can test if different paints will have a negative reaction to each other before you have that happen on the blaster. Um, so general safety and trying to not make a mess while spray painting, uh, I would always recommend painting outdoors. This is mostly because when you paint something with spray paint, the paint will go past the object you're painting and get on like a lot of stuff that you like, it'll reach way farther than you think. Um, so I would always recommend painting away from anything that you don't want paint on, um, wearing old clothing and shoes. Uh, another thing that can happen is paint can build up on the nozzle of your spray can and then fall down in big drips. So you could get like paint drips on your floor or on your deck or on your shoes or your clothes. So again, wear old clothing if you have it, uh, old shoes. Um, if not, just try to be careful about that. Um, and yeah, just be conscious about where you're painting. I would normally just paint like in the front lawn because uh, if sun eating drips, then it doesn't matter. Um, uh, one of the thing you might want to do if you do a lot of spray painting is wear a respirator if you have one. Um, again, like you don't really need a respirator for spray paint all the time. If, if it's like an occasional thing, like maybe once every few months, then I wouldn't worry about it. If you spray paint a lot, then you might want to invest in, in a respirator. Uh, it's, I mean, it's your lungs. It's up to you. Um, so general spray paint stuff, um, I use all sorts of brands of paint, per basically anything that comes in the color that I want, I'll just buy it and use it. Uh, again, I, I do tests to make sure I won't get a bad reaction between paints. Uh, I really like using these graffiti paints. Um, you can buy these at art stores. There's all sorts of different brands. I like these because they come in a wider variety of colors and usually brighter colors than you can find in hardware store brands like Krylon and, uh, and Rust-Oleum. Um, so yeah, I like these for colors. For my primer, I use this Rust-Oleum and I pretty much use it specifically because it says it bonds the plastic on the can. Um, also, the, the primers come in different colors. Uh, there's white, black, gray, etc. If you're doing a paint job with bright colors, you might want to use white primer underneath it. Um, I find this specifically useful if your paints aren't very opaque and you need more than one coat for coverage. If you had a yellow uh, that isn't very opaque and you sprayed it over black primer, you might need more coats to get it to look bright and a vibrant yellow than you would if you sprayed it over a white primer. So that's that. Um, oh, if you buy these these uh, art can uh, spray cans, 
I would always recommend buying extra tips. Uh, you think you usually have to ask at the counter for more spray tips. They're like 50 cents a piece or something. These clog pretty frequently, I find. Um, but the, it's only the, the tip that's clogged. It's not the can. So the can is still good. You just need a new tip to keep using the can. Um, uh, as for clear coats, um, I've had a lot of bad luck with clear coats. Uh, I've lately been using Duplicolor. I all specifically like their matte finish Duplicolor. So I've had other matte clear coats that come out looking milky and it like dulls the color of, of your paint. Uh, I find that this one doesn't do that nearly as much. So I, I like this one from matte. Um, and yeah, that's, that's that. I also use their gloss. Um, so that's, that's basically all the paint stuff. So as for prep work for your painting project. So for me, in this case, I'm only painting this red plastic. I don't want to get any paint on this black grip. So the best way for me to not get paint on this black grip is to disassemble my blaster and not have this attached while I'm painting this red grip. Uh, so yeah, I would always recommend disassembling your stuff so that you, I would don't get paint like on the barrel or on the trigger or on the grip or anything I don't want paint on. It's pretty much just like, it removes the my ability to screw up because the stuff just isn't present. Um, another idea I would always recommend is finding a way that you can hang your project. I don't have any wire here, but I would always use wire um, and hang it from inside the shell or somewhere, or anywhere that I can get a piece of wire so that I don't have to touch my paint while it's still fresh. Uh, it also means that I can, I don't have to hold the part until it's dry. I can just have the piece of wire and hang it on something and just leave it there for hours. And it's not, it's not, not to worry about the paint getting um, damaged from it laying down on something. Um, so the, the first thing I do before I start painting anything is I sand the surface because this, this glossy plastic doesn't, the, the paint doesn't like holding onto it. If you get a scratch in your, your paint, the paint will also likely chip around the scratch because it doesn't, it can't stick to this smooth surface very well. So the best way to do that is I just use 20 grit sandpaper or 220 grit sandpaper, sorry. And I just scuff up the surface, like, like that's good enough for this area. Well, a little bit more, maybe. <laughs> like that's that's fine. You don't need a lot. You just need to to scuff the surface a little bit. Uh, if you're removing a lot of material, then like you're doing too much before you're you're sanding. After you've sanded the part, you want to clear off all the dust from the sanding and also wash it in soapy water to remove any like greases from your skin that might be on the part because those will also uh, prevent the paint from sticking as well as it could be. Um, after the part is sanded, the next thing you want to do is spray primer. Again, this is to help the paint stick to the plastic. Um, like it's basically just really all these steps are there to make sure the paint stays on the blaster as long as possible. Um, you also want to make sure that you read on the cans, the instructions for like how long you should be spraying between coats, um, how long the part or how long the paint can take to dry before it can be handled or touched. Um, I would also be cautious about the time that they give on, on the, the cans, because if you spray your paint extra thick, it will take longer to dry. Um, also like this can says that on plastic, the maximum adhesion and durability is after five to seven days. And I would, I would honestly take that into account. Um, like I wouldn't paint this the day before a war. I would paint it a week before a war before handling it. Uh, cause you really don't want to leave fingerprints in your fresh paint. I've been there. It sucks. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so after that, um, I would also wait 
like I would let paint dry overnight before I start putting tape on it because I don't want my my masking tape to peel off my paint like midway through a paint job. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Like like honestly, take your time. You don't want to rush this and screw it up before you're even finished. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do for this is I'm going to sand the entire surface. It's probably going to take me like five minutes max. Um, when I'm sanding, I want to make sure I get any surfaces that would normally get touched a lot during play. Cause those are areas that are going to be wearing down quicker than others. Um, so I want to like, make sure I scuff up like any area around the breach. Cause I'll be reaching in there and shoving darts in, um, or like here under the lever that, that pivots up and down that this paint will be will likely to get scratched very quickly by the lever. Um, and yeah, I, I also want to fill in this little copyright blurb. So I'm just going to fill that in with epoxy putty and sand it flush. And the next time you see this, it'll be sanded and ready to be uh, primered. Okay, here's a knockout sanded. I have uh, bent a piece of wire. I'm putting it through that screw post in the back just so I can hold on to the knockout without having to spray paint my own hands. Okay, I'm mostly going to focus on like the, the tighter nooks and crannies on the first pass. And I also want to cover up my putty work to see if I did a good job. And I want to try to get the bottom as well. Okay, and that's good enough for the first pass. So you can still clearly see the original paint through the primer. And that's fine. Oh, I should also mention that my phone is currently covered in plastic wrap so I don't paint it by accident. Alright, I'll come back in 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, I forgot I didn't want to get excess paint inside the shell, so I just shoved a plastic shopping bag in there. I'm going to keep spraying. So I'm spraying about six inches from the surface. Okay. Okay, that's good enough for coat two. You can still see a little bit through the paint. I don't want to go any further than that. Okay, now it's 10 minutes later. I'm going to do a third coat of primer. Okay, I'm gonna grab the bottom here, see if I can look at the front. So yeah, I since it was hanging upside down, this surface here it wasn't getting enough primer, so I'm gonna try to spray up into that. I'm trying to get the front as well. Yeah, that looks good to me. So I think I'm done with primer on this. I'm going to let that dry for 10-15 minutes and then I'll come back and start working on the, uh, the fade.
like I said, I don't know if I mentioned, I'm doing a fade from pink to purple on this. Um, because people asked about how I do gradients and fades with spray paint. Anyway, be back in 10 minutes. Okay, I'm back with a tip that actually works this time. Okay, I'm gonna switch to the pink. All right. So for this first coat, I'm only really trying to get good coverage on the very top and the very bottom. I'm trying to, uh... yeah, this is looking pretty good. Uh, I've got paint on my fingers. When I'm doing that, I'm grabbing the inside of the shell, so it, it doesn't matter if I touch that. This paint is all very still wet. Okay, so I'm gonna go hang this for it to dry for 10, 15 minutes. And now, so my tip doesn't clog, I'm gonna hold the can upside down and you should see a pink spray and then it'll turn white. So that's just cleaning out the paint from the tip so hopefully it doesn't clog again. Okay, it's been 10-15 minutes. It's time for a new coat. Uh, I noticed that on the top here I have a little bit of white primer still poking through so I'm gonna start there. Okay, and now I'm just gonna swap colors. So do the darker pink. Forgot to shake this one before I turned on the camera. I've been shaking everything before I was filming up until now. Okay, so I'm gonna try to aim for like this lower section here. Get some inside the breech a little bit. Paint the bottom. Okay. So now my third color on there, I'm gonna switch to purple and do the, the top part here. So whenever I swap colors, I'm always spraying away from the blaster first so that if anything funny comes out of the bottle, it doesn't end up on my project. So I'm going to wipe the paint off the nozzle. Oh. And it just clogged. It's not working anymore. That stinks. Okay, I'm gonna switch nozzles and I'll come back. Okay, I'm back with another nozzle. Let's see if I can finish this. This is a higher flow nozzle than the other one was, unfortunately. That sort of works though. I don't want to... Hmm. So yeah, I'm going to redo the blue on top because this nozzle is kind of overpowering everything. Oops.
and I'm gonna try to get some on the uh, side of the breach. It's all pink right there. I'll wait for the wind to pass. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So I'm gonna redo the blue one on the very back. And then the fade will be done unless I screw this up. So back on the blue. And yeah. <laughs> Man, this nozzle is hard to paint with. Try to get more purple on there. So I'm not waiting between coats for this because I'm putting down so little paint. I'm gonna try to touch up the darker pink again because I've got too much purple. And it's this pretty much it. I'm just kind of bouncing between colors because this nozzle is kind of a little bit too aggressive. I've got more purple. I'm going to try to put more blue again. I think I'm gonna call that done because I, I can't. This nozzle is a little bit too aggressive to get any finer. Still looks cool though. I like it. All right, so I'm gonna wait 10 minutes and then spray on some clear, and I'll be back for that. Okay, just gonna spray some clear on it, and uh, I'm probably just gonna do one coat of clear. Honestly, it doesn't seem like I need it any more than that. So. Just, you know, staying about six inches away and trying to overlap all my previous sprays. Because obviously I can't tell exactly where I sprayed with, with clear coat. Get the top and get the front. And I'll just go over every area a second time. And I'm going to call that done. Now I'm going to let this dry overnight and I'm going to come back tomorrow and do some stripes on the front. Okay, now it's about 20 hours since I painted yesterday. I'm gonna start putting some tape down. I wanna do two diagonal stripes on the front right about here. Uh, while I was painting, I was having some troubles with my uh, hold to use spray tips clogging up a little bit. So you can see the this one, the, the size of the droplets is coarser than this. This looks more smooth, I mean, Nothing I can really do about it. I can't really go out and buy more spray tips right now. It's not like a bad thing. It uh, it just looks different. I still like the way it looks though, so I'm happy. Uh, so as for stripes, I'm gonna use masking tape. I have two different sizes of masking tape. Um, it's pretty useful to have a couple different sizes for for different things. Like like this tape, you can. Uh, curve 
a little bit easier than you could this larger tape, for example. I don't know if I can, if I tried to bend this one, it might wrinkle more. So this one has a, a smoother curve to it. Um, so another thing that uh, different sizes of tapes is useful for is for like laying out your stripes or anything. So I want to do two white stripes, a, a large one and a thin one. And I want the spacing between the big stripe and the thin stripe to be the same width as the thin stripe. So I'm just gonna, gonna eyeball it on the first side. Something like that. Yeah, it looks good. Can't really complain about that. Well, actually, I think I wanna match the, the angle of this X. So I'm gonna lift that up and try to get that to match. I'll do it right there. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so now I have this this other piece of tape. Uh, so what I'm gonna I want this to be exactly spaced out from the first stripe to be the same width as as this piece of tape. I also want it to be perfectly parallel. Like I'm exaggerating, but I don't want this stripe to be crooked compared to this one. So what I'm gonna do. And I'm going to take this piece of tape and I'm going to put it directly next to that piece of tape there. I'm now going to take another piece of uh, my thin tape. I'm going to lay it directly next to this one. Like that. So now, uh, when I take away this piece of tape, these two are exactly parallel and the space between the two stripes is the same thickness as this thin piece of tape. So that's kind of a, a little tip there. Um, so obviously right now, I don't want to paint this, I want to paint where these two stripes are. So I'm actually going to put this piece of tape back in. Because I actually need it. Push it down. I'm also going to use my, my fingernail to get into this groove right here. And then wrap that around. That was exactly the right length. Uh, grab a bigger piece of tape. Oh, not that much. Put it here. And again, I'm, I'm gonna gradually push the tape down. So I don't wanna get any air bubbles or, or creases where I don't want any. Again, using my fingernail to get into this little crack and then rolling that up. So now I can remove this piece of tape. And that is where I want one of my white stripes. I need to... So right here, the, the tape doesn't wanna fold over cause it's up here, so I'm just gonna use a knife to cut that. And then fold it down. And I'm just trying to cut the tape, I'm not cutting, not scratching my uh, my part. So there we go, I have that pressed down. Now I need to put another piece of tape. that one up right here again I'm just trying to put that directly next to my first piece of tape and I want to use my fingernail and a little groove here I'll just make sure there's no air pockets And now I can take off this piece of tape. So this is where I want my two stripes. Um, so the next thing is I want this, these two stripes to be on the other side. Um, 
this takes a little bit of trial and error. Um, oh, that didn't fold correctly. Okay, I'm going to cut this right here. I want this bottom to be as even as I can get it. Yeah, that's good. So for the next one, um, Yeah, I'm probably just gonna have to eyeball this a little bit. I'm just gonna cut off this XX tape. Like that. Okay. So I know that my tape here is almost on the shell seam, so that's a good reference point. So I'm just gonna put that right there. And then this corner is about halfway through this panel. So I'm gonna try to aim for that right about there. Gradually push that down and I my so my tape now is is getting too far away from the seam, so I'm gonna pull that up and then try again. A little bit of trial and error to get the, the stripes to match from both sides. Oh that's perfect. Right there. So I have some excess tape which I'm just gonna cut away with my knife. Um, and now that I have this angle pretty much where I want it. I'm just going to space out all my stripes with pieces of tape again. So that's about parallel. I'm going to put this piece down. And this one doesn't need to stay there. Now I can start to compare this this, these two pieces of tape to see how I feel about where it's landing on the shell um, and just kind of work my way across like that. So I've already paint, or filled myself painting this gradient so I don't feel like I need to fill myself painting these two white stripes. I'm pretty much just going to be using the white primer that I already have as my white paint. I'll be doing three to four thin coats space 10 minutes apart and then I'm going to be putting some clear coat over that and then the painting is done on this plaster. Um, so I'm just going to finish taping this up and I'll be back once the stripes are painted. Okay, Just to show this I've gone ahead and made all my stripes parallel to each other, made sure that they look even on both sides of the plaster as best as I could. And then I covered everything I don't want paint on, uh, just to make sure that's that's on video. Uh, one thing I decided I didn't like was how this and this angle were coming to a point. I want this to go across the top, like flat. So I'm going to use this thin tape for that. Uh, just an example of how you can kind of bend the tape as you're putting it down. So I'm going to start by lining that up with my tape edge there. And now I'm going to press that down, put my thumb on it, and I can kind of bend the tape as I'm putting it down. So now I have the top pretty much parallel with this edge. Squeeze that down. I'm going to pinch that corner. And I'll put my thumb here, and then I'm going to try to curve that down to meet the other 
landscape edge. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to go paint this now. Uh, I guess one thing I'm going to point out, um, when I go back downstairs, just before I start painting, I'm going to make sure I press down all of my tape, get my fingernail and all these little ridges. I don't want to get, get paint uh, under my tape anywhere. So I'm just going to make sure everything is pressed down firmly before I start spraying. Okay. All right. So I have uh, painted my stripes. So if you're still here at the end of this video, now you get to watch my favorite part of painting something, which is peeling off all of this tape. This is like Christmas. It's so satisfying. Let's get this wire out of here. Okay, now I get to see if my uh, paint bled through my tape or not. these small ones. And then I have this front bit. Nice. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with, with, how, with how this front turned out. It's pretty clean looking. So yeah, I'm gonna let this uh, hang on my wire in my room for like another couple days before I assemble it. I just wanna make sure that I give the paint plenty of time to cure before I start uh, putting the blaster back together. Anyway, thanks for watching.